Okay, so today we're doing some book reviews. I'm doing Highly Suspicious and I'm Fairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Yeah, put your cup down. My cup? No. Yes. I'm drinking tea. Oh. Green tea. Okay, and I'm doing The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. Do Ooh. you want me to start or do you want to start? Well, how long are your notes? I don't have that much. I'll start then. So, like I said, um, Highly Suspicious and I'm Fairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. She also wrote Get a Life, Kobe Brown, which I've done a review on as well. And I also have another book by her this month that I'm reading. So this is like a cute little YA romance. And it's also uh, Bill Dung's Roman, if you didn't know. Do you remember our A to Z um, tag? And it's a Bill, D Bill Dung's then Roman. I must be reading a lot of those Bill Dung's Romans because I, re I always read like a lot of coming of age stories. So. Yeah. Okay, so I... Did you like look that up or something? No, I just looked up the title of the book and I saw that it was on there. It was showing like the genres, it was, like, three genres, and I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh. Mm. Okay. Okay, a lot of people talk about um, Talia Hibbert. She's a great writer, great romance writer. However, in this book, I didn't like the first half. I'm going to tell you why. But I did, um, I thought it was a cute YA romance and I liked that it talked about like OCD and parent neglect and... I did like the coming of age aspect, especially what Celine went through and what she experienced and her come to the realization that she shouldn't do everything just to spite her father um, for neglecting the family and stuff like that. Mm, deadbeat. So yeah, yeah. So I like that they went through realistic life issues, even mm. showing, they didn't show too much of um, Bradley's OCD issues, they, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to speak out so much just to represent like a certain issue or characteristic or anything you don't have to like always talk about it throughout the book but i did like that and i even liked that celine was a tiktok star <laughs> you know very modern yeah um wait didn't she do <laughs> she's so funny she did um it was like conspiracy conspiracies <laughs> yes that's so right about yes. Allie. <laughs> um however in the first half of the book i didn't care for the banter i thought it was like too much of the banter and i thought it was very harsh so I feel like I couldn't get into it as much, um, especially because I didn't know the reason behind the banter. So they were just going at it and I'm just like, what are all these snide comments for? I don't understand like what the issue is. Like it went right into it and it was super harsh. So I'm just like, when I found the re when I found out the reason, I was like, y'all could have just let it be. Enemies? That's crazy for what the, the reason why they fell out. I was like, that's too much. So. After that, after I found out the reason um, and they became friends again, I got into the book a little bit more. Okay. Because it wasn't focused on that. It wasn't, it wasn't focused on the banter um, and their falling out. And then I, so I enjoyed it way more in the second half. Overall, I would give this book a four. Okay, that's good. It's, it's good. It's about a 3.8 on, um, 3.78 on Goodreads. Haters. Um... And so I, I think it's very similar. I would give it by Goodreads standards or its story graph standards. I would give it a 3.75 actually. Okay. Closer to that just because that it's like a whole first half is a lot to not enjoy it as much. I did think it was good writing um, and I did like the, ro like the romance. It wasn't overwhelming for a YA because that would be, that'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. But I did enjoy it as a book. Um, but yeah, that the banter was just too much for me. Okay. See, I love some good banter, so that's... I do, it. too. But I prefer, like, comedic banter. Okay. Um, playful well, banter rather than it was the back and forth. And I obviously understand why. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not frenemies or anything. They, they, well, they weren't. But for me, it was just like, okay, what else is this book about? Are you guys just going to go back and forth every time you see each other, every time anything happens? Like, that's that's more my problem. But I did enjoy it. Okay. That is all. And I know you said that was your favorite book. That was another one. Favorite Talia Hilbert, Hibbert one. So was this just to spite me or? Yes. No, I was kidding. <laughs> My face. I knew you said that. And also, I think I saw another a TikTok post that said that as well, that their favorite one was this. Um, don't get why. Just because you I don't, don't got to no, do that. No, I'm only saying that is because I really enjoyed this, the series. The okay. Brown. Um, well, that's adult. This is why. So there. No, I know. But. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I guess they were saying it out of Talia Hibbert books, not like 
if I have to say out of the, the four books, I would say one of the Brown sisters. Why but do you think she only has four books? I, that's what the post I'm talking about. And I think that have you have, that you've read. Yes, I've read four of her books. Okay, so out of these four books, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, I, I'd give it a four. I would still continue reading Tally Hibbert. Like I might check out more books after the Brown Sisters and this book. Yes, I yeah I told you I feel like like the roommate risk. I feel like that'd be okay. Tally. I think she has another book as well. Okay, so out of that. That's that. Okay. Actually. Considering, I believe OCD, I don't want to be wrong, because I'm looking it up to make sure. I believe it counts as neurodivergence. Okay. So I believe this would count. As, For my challenge? Yes. Reading challenge? Okay. Oh my gosh, now that you bring that up, I need to like update everyone like on what we have read or completed in the challenge. No, we do that in the wrap-ups. I already said this. No, I like at the post. Oh, like you our check mark thing. Wow, you're slipping. Gosh, so you're I will do slacking. that. Okay, my turn. I guess it's my turn. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't understand what I just said, but fine. Was that Nikki? Yeah. Hmm. Ooh. I understood, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um all right, my book. I wrote a synopsis. I just feel like Go we're ahead. on the same level. Because we talked about this book like five times but last year. Matt, lie. Whatever. Okay, the first in a duology about four black young women in 1910 Chicago. Each of the four are combating parental pressures, societal issues, and blooming romances, and must balance it all while overcoming their internal conflicts. Period. Nice thoughts. I just feel like somebody got to hire me. I do great No, synopsis. literally, you should do that. You should like write synopsis for books. Hit me up. My email. If anyone knows, have a job. All right. So my thoughts. I liked it. I assume so. The okay. End. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Wouldn't that be a, a hoot? Okay. My favorite aspect of the book was the historical setting and like how it talks about um, how people are still dealing with the after effects of slavery, mm. um, even in free Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Does that mean something? You just looked at me after you said Free Chicago. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. But, okay. Anyways, so this book is set ter der, ugh, This book is set in a time when many black, black people are still dealing with the after effects of slavery, such as the Davenport patriarch. So he, the father, he was a runaway slave. Okay. And he lost, like, he lost contact with his brother. So he's trying to look for him and stuff, and he still bears the scars from his slavery. Her, their mother, however, was born free, but obviously she still deals with stuff as a black woman. Um, and while Chicago is not subject to the same Jim Crow laws that are plaguing the South, um, the law there's laws still being passed that are trying to restrict black business owners. Um, regular black employees are unable to find suitable work or they're being mistreated at the work that they already have like um there was a woman who apparently had to walk all the way home from her factory job because the the bathrooms can't be shared between black and whites um oh, okay and it's only a matter of time before the issues work their way around the country so that's one of the things that's happening here and this is yet another book where reputation, social standing, and marriage is a big deal, particularly in the upper crust or upper echelon of society. So that's a big theme throughout the book, um, particularly for women. Um, I like the personal issues that each girl went through. Um, and it just made this book more, not like not just about them finding love, but they're overcoming their own struggles. So Olivia Davenport, the eldest daughter, is now of age. She's 19 and she's looking to fulfill her duty of finding a husband. However, she steps out of her privileged setting um, to aid with civil rights um, issues hitting her city. And all, along the way, she um, finds her passion and love. Um, Helen Davenport, the youngest daughter, yearns to be part of the family business. It's a, um, a carriage 
like a luxury carriage company mm -hmm. that her dad made and she wants to be a mechanic like her um like her older brother john who's going to inherit the company because he is a man but she's instead pressured to be more ladylike and get ready to make a match in society because she's almost of age and you got ruby i forgot her last name <laughs> um she's the best friend of olivia and she's pressured to make a match with john um, however, she has to choose between um, her familial duties and the love of an unsuitable man in the eyes of her parents. And lastly, you got Amy Rose. I also forgot her last name. My bad. Um, she's the childhood friend turned maid of the Davenports, and she wishes to own her own hair care business um, in a time where it's uncom uncommon for unmarried women to do so. Um, Along the way, she's also combating feelings of inadequacy as a mixed race woman, and she's also obviously poor. Um, these are dynamics and interesting issues um, that definitely overshadow the romance aspect, which I have a problem with. Um, this is part romance, mm -hmm. so I feel like it should have been equal or... Well, it was equally shown, but I don't think it was equally well written. Oh, I feel like the romances were pretty rushed and unearned, especially when um, all the couples said, I love you, but I don't feel like it, that was an earned notion. It's probably like the the author isn't that great of a romance writer. What? Why would you say this? Because they don't know. I'm just saying like they probably don't write romance as well, well which is, is basically what you said. This is a debut. Okay. Amateur hour over here. Stop. <laughs> No, no, I want to partially chalk it up to it being a quadruple POV book. So that may be kind of hard to write for equally um, well-written romances. But that's the same amateur hour because pick one. If you're not no. great at romance, don't write the romance in all of them. Or take out some POVs, time management, like let's get it together here. Why are you bullying? Crystal Marquis. Um, I do want to point out she studied biology. See? And romance is in her strong suit. What? Um, let me finish. Okay. What's going on? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I feel like you got that tea in your hand and you're just feeling yourself. Right. I'm spilling the tea. Anyways. <laughs> I couldn't stand these parents. I'm going to tell you right now. Um... Throughout this whole book, all they did, both sets of parents that were shown, claimed they um they were they wanted what was best for their children. They wanted, um, they want the best for them. The both parents are rich parents, so they grew up with money. All the kids, and they were just uncompromising and controlling of all the children. And no Z A F. Mm. It just pissed me off so much. I, and I don't even know which group of parents pissed me off the most. I feel like it was Ruby's parents because of what they were forcing her to do. But they were just equally terrible to me. Like, and I know deep down, like, at least I can tell the Davenport parents were like, they loved their children. Mm -hmm. But they... Show it in a different way. Stop forcing your children to marry people they don't want to. Uh, it's more like we want the best for you. Yes. So make these good matches. Um, you need to show. You need to be more ladylike. Go into etiquette training. You cannot work for our family business. You are a woman. That pissed me off. So it was like. Oh, it, it was great drama in this book. So I'm, I'm going to say that. But it's like, don't even fight you. I don't want to have to do that. Um, so all in all, I gave this book a four. Ooh. I feel like it could have been a five had, or at least a higher four, if the romance was better. Because that is a big part of this book. Um, I hope the romances are filled out a bit more in the next book. It is a duology, of course. So I recommend this book. Um even past this book because it's obviously black people um you got uh, race issues so great for black history month but read this beyond this month i think it'd be i think it's a good book yeah mm -hmm. very complicated 
individuals. I might add it to my TBR. It's very interesting as well. So learn some history. Oh, okay. As well. Real history. Like it's yeah. not. Okay. Also, she wrote, I love when authors write their author's notes and like where they get um, their ideas from. Like, I believe um, she said that the Davenport Company and I think the the Patriarch, I think he was based off of a real person. I love that. Like, I like, I like a good history lesson. Oh my God. I don't know if I said this the first time we talked about the, that book, um, but the back of that says Fortune Favor the, the Bold. Yes, I did notice that. And my tattoo says Fortune Favors the Bold. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's meant to be. I'll add it to my TBR. Yay! Okay, so um, that was our two book reviews for this week. Um, let us know if you've read either, either of these books. Um, let us know your thoughts on them. We clearly like them. We gave them both fours. And I'm a look... I'm going to be looking out for the dual, the next book and you're going to be re continuing to read from Tally Hooper. Of course, you're reading Miss Taika Brown. I'm going to take a hint. Take a hint, Danny Brown. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Definitely look up these authors. Um, support these black people. I guess, yeah. Even past If they're this good. Month. Well, they are good. We're saying so, aren't we? I guess. Let us know if you... If you if you like them or, or if you didn't like them i want to know why because she hated the first half no i didn't <laughs> oh, i didn't hate it it just, just i didn't i wasn't as invested into it and that's fine i'm okay at least you gave it a chance you didn't write it so you better be okay with says it says who what if i was like a ghostwriter or something no because i write great synopses apparently yes hit me up like i said um that what is all say? okay Nothing. like subscribe Comment below and watch our other videos and be on the lookout for some more videos we got coming up. We've got, can I say what was one of the videos we're going to say? Do? Sure. All right. We're going to do like a, some favorite romance tropes for this month. So be on the lookout for that and other videos and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.